um, I'm going to talk today about uh, The Game by Ken Dryden. Um, and I thought that I would start with this book because I think that it is kind of hands down the most uh, important and certainly most widely read uh, hockey book um, in existence. I think if you were to just ask a random hockey fan on the street what their favorite or what they thought the best hockey book was, nine out of ten times you're going to get the game. Um, you might get the greatest game. Um, which is up there. It's by Todd Denault, and that's about the Summit Series. Um, or if you happen to be in America and find an American hockey fan, uh, you might get Boys of Winter. But I think that if you were to just take a survey, um, the game is going to win every time. Um, so the game was written by Ken Dryden, who is one of the best goalies ever. Um, he played in the Summit Series. Um, he played for the Montreal Canadiens. Um, interestingly, he was actually drafted to the Bruins, but he was only on the Bruins for like a few hours before they traded him to the Habs, and he did not find out until years later that he had originally been drafted to the Bruins. Um, so that's some fun trivia for you. Um, anyway, so let's talk about the game which is hard for me because it makes me very emotional. I think if you are a hockey fan, if you are interested in the way that hockey intersects with society um, and the way that hockey has become a part of the Canadian psyche, um, it is something that is really well covered in this book, um, but it's not boring. You know what I mean? I think he takes a very interesting look through the eyes of his teammates. Um, he kind of structures it so that like roughly every chapter he's talking about a different teammate and their kind of road to the NHL. Um, so that's really interesting. And he has, he just has a lot of insight on the game and um, on the way that hockey is changing um, and the way that it had changed back when he was playing and where he sort of thought it was going. Um, I'm a sucker for anyone ever talking about the Soviet Russian team and he was very sweet about the Soviets, which I deeply appreciate. And I'm actually, I'm gonna read a small section. Sorry, you can see I have all these cute post-its. He also talks a lot about goalies because he was a goalie and that's really damaging for me. So, the Soviets pass better than we do because their crisscross diagonal patterns allow it and demand it because passing is a fundamental of their game, fostered and encouraged by their leadership because the instincts and skills necessary to develop naturally from practice and use. We need no less. We must abandon our tethered, straight-ahead style up and down like table hockey players. Offensively, it has made no sense for 50 years. Defensively, picking up our wings, it makes sense only because the offense is so strangled. We must find open ice, moving on diagonals to present a better target, a target that skates in front of us, not away from us, using the width of the ice for more space, more time to pick up more speed, to make those unburdened by the puck the creative figures. We must take the focus off the puck carrier, who turns ours into a team game. We should remove the individualist's instinct to skate several strides with the puck. We must force a pass, one touch, to pick up speed, to create an advantage and press it. We should use more of the ice, make the game less congested. Like big fullbacks running into a line, we skate always anticipating contact, straining against it even when it isn't there. Breaking into the open, we feel naked and clumsy as if robbed of our skills. We must become more comfortable with open ice, make quickness and creativity seem like more than just flash. And the league must deliver a message clear and uncompromising. Hooking, holding, and high sticking will be penalized so that the quick and skilled are not, so that the open ice will be not will not be taken away. So if anyone has spent any time at all listening to what's icing or reading my blog, you know that those words are my heart song and that I'm gonna get them tattooed on my face. Um, but I think that's a really good example of the whole tone of the book. I think Ken Dryden like does not give a shit about offending old guard. Um, he is really okay with just saying what he thinks and like being very certain that he's right, um, which I appreciate. I think he's got opinions and he's not afraid to tell you about them. Um, so that's a good example though. I mean, he's very insightful. He's very smart. Um, he's fun to read. He really knows how to turn a phrase. Um, so 10 out of 10 for the game. And it's also very damaging emotionally. I mean, I am not, listen, I know Montreal and I have a very complicated relationship, but this book makes me want to fly there and like gather all of its players in my arms and be like, shh, I will keep you safe. Trust Auntie Molly Hall. Like we're gonna make it through this together. Um, 
but yeah, so if you like goalies, if you like hockey talk, if you are at all interested in history, and if you really like when goalies get salty, then this book is for you. So again, I don't know if you can see, that is the game. It's by Ken Dryden. Um, you can pick it up, I am quite certain, almost anywhere that they have a hockey section. Um, and let me know what you guys think.